Hey, have you ever wanted to be me? No, obviously not. Well, have you ever wanted to be me without the massive personality defects and only capable of moving from side to side like a brain-damaged crab? Well then, play Hatfall, the official zero punctuation game for browsers and tablets designed by me and without a doubt the greatest interactive hat-putting on simulator called Hatfall ever devised by man. Good cyber morning to all you script kiddies and leet hacksaws out there surfing the information superhighway like a bunch of fucking wankers. Say what you like about Ubisoft, they're fucking masters of the soft cell. Assassin's Creed 4 won me over, how on earth are you going to build on that in Ubity, Ubisoft? I mean Unity, Ubisoft. Well, we thought we'd take the pirate ship out and make the game world considerably smaller. Uh, I said build on. Oh right, sorry, I thought you said burn to the ground and wank on the ruins, but nevertheless I downloaded the Steam version and my PC promptly burst into tears. It stuttered, it bugged out, it kept shutting down, it was like how I react when an attractive stranger attempts to flirt. In the end, I put a coat over my Hawaiian shirt and turned up my collar to hide my neck beard and committed the most grievous PC gamer sin of all. I went out and bought the PS4 version, which at least didn't crash, even if the frame rates kept dropping and it still had more clipping issues than an arthritic hairdresser. Seems like these days there are a lot of people banging on about how we need more gender diversity in games and more roles for women besides being the focus of stealth snogging tutorials, and then something like Bayonetta 2 comes out and they turn around and say, we need more gender diversity in games that isn't that. Well jeez guys, I don't know what you want anymore. I mean Bayonetta's clearly powerful and in control of her life, admittedly she looks like a flagpole with various items of sporting equipment nailed to it, but the debate over whether she represents female empowerment or or sexual objectification is, for me, a fairly swiftly resolved one. Process of elimination, really. She can't be a sex object because she has the proportions of an internet meme horror character. I'm trying to imagine having sex with her and it feels like rubbing my dick on the robot from the day the earth stood still. My mind can't quite get to the point of having lustful thoughts because I'm too worried about where I'm gonna find a stepladder at this time of night. I think this would be a better world if we could all be more open about our weird pleasures. We might find that perhaps they're not as weird as we imagine. When I finally had the courage to stand up and say, you know what, I actually really like taking crystal meth. You'd be surprised how many of my cellmates are on the same page. This game Game's shit. Oh sorry, I usually do more of a setup than that, don't I? I'll start again. Goodness me, this game's shit. If you're not familiar with it, the long-running Godzilla franchise is what happens when you nuke a country twice. You see, when you punish a child by making them smoke an entire carton of cigarettes, you shouldn't be surprised if they end up addicted. And similarly, when you go into someone's country and blow up all their shit to make them stop being jerks, you've only yourself to blame if watching all their shit getting blown up becomes the only way they can get hard. In Batman Arkham Knight, our hero must face his deadliest foe yet, a 30 FPS frame rate cap. The PC Master Race started sharpening their carbon fibre knives after a PC port that has been most charitably described as a face full of piss on a hot summer's day limped through the castle gates. I wouldn't know about that, I played the console version, because I recalled the Arkham Origins PC port being dodgy as well, and I too possess a superpower, the power to remember things. Such as the fact that my new game Hatfall is out and you can play it now, hip hip hooray, it's great. There once was a game called Destiny, looked more like a graphical test to me. It's brown, there's a gun, and it looks as much fun as requiring a double mastectomy. The claim that motion controls would enhance immersion was always about as believable as the claim that a sledgehammer can enhance a Fabergé egg, but I genuinely believe that VR represents the the way forward for immersive gaming, if they can iron out that whole playing it for more than an hour makes my stomach want to crawl up my throat and file divorce proceedings against my inner ear problem. But of course, Oculus already did its pre-E3 announcement that it was jumping into bed with Microsoft. Yowza, could have broken that more gently, Oculus. You don't come out to your parents in a Christmas card. And also, there's going to be a special two-handed controller that incorporates- No! That incorporates motion Oh god, no! That incorporates motion sensor tech- No, 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 we were so close! We were almost free! Why must we forever carry our failures around with us like a scrotum full of horseshoes? Oh, you can pick up a virtual gun with your actual hand and fire it. Cause that's what I want added to the process of shooting an enemy, isn't it? My noodly wrist groping for something that isn't there like a castrated wanker. Hey, Captain Scott, how about we make sure we can actually get to the South Pole before we start making plans to erect the Statue of Liberty there? Alien Isolation. I didn't put a dry heave in between that one because it's still grammatically correct without a colon. We do indeed spend a lot of time being isolated by an alien. And the other meaning is also true, the alien itself is pretty isolated. Maybe you'd have more friends, Mr. Alien, if you didn't keep drooling everywhere and sexually assaulting people. I learned that in high school. Although one last week link is Amanda herself. She's got the same problem Lara Croft had in the Tomb Raider reboot, getting strength of character confused with getting enough shit kicked out of you to fill every cereal bowl in the housewares department. She spends most of her time merely reacting to a sequence of unrelated betrayals and random accidents in a run of inexplicable bad luck worthy of a gypsy curse, making her a silent protagonist might have worked better, if only because that would explain why she never says, sure I could go alone into hostile territory yet again to fetch your keycard, but how about instead you eat the contents of this cereal bowl? Tell me, little finger puppet, assuming that multiplayer elements are about as enticing to me as the sight of a dog sniffing another dog's bum, an easy thing to assume because they are, are there any new features SimCity can offer me? Well, there's a poo map. I beg your pardon? We've got a special map that lets you see all the poo, forming in big piles under people's houses. Then you can build an outlet pipe and watch all the poo speed away on a wee wee one-way system. 
fucking sold! And now your regularly scheduled reminder that the new consoles are shit. The new consoles are shit. Thank you. For further information, look at a new console and rub shit in your eyes. I know I don't usually use screenshots or footage of the games I review in Zero Punctuation because I wouldn't want anyone to get some misguided impression that I know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm going to make an exception in this case and share with you my first impression of hatred. Yep, you can see what all the controversy was about now, can't you? That fiery orange text could cause some real emotional damage to a pyrophobe or an Irish separatist. Yes, Australia continues its valiant efforts to rescue its beer-swilling, thong-wearing, spouse-beating population from moral degeneracy, and I in turn continue to fight the power with daring guerrilla tactics like steam codes. All the battles you aren't directly involved with seem to entail both sides making disapproving eye contact as they get out their exercise books and compete to see who can deduce first which part of the sword is the pointy bit. And as the lone bastion of competence, you have to field requests to run back back and forth across the battlefield to bail out allies and strongholds because a small cat just sat itself down outside the gate and started licking its bum hole in what was interpreted as an aggressive way. If a developer announces their intention to adapt to video games what is simultaneously a massive movie franchise and the croutons in the primordial soup of nerd culture, that developer should be treated the way one treats a man standing on the ledge of a tall building. Because that is a perfect storm of drama they're letting themselves in for, you'll have the movie people on one side concerned that you didn't render Gollum's left buttock in accordance with the style guide, and on the other the long-standing fanboys, meaningfully sharpening an impractically large replica sword. Oh I forgot, we're also introducing original characters as we dramatise an as yet unseen aspect of the canon. Jesus Christ, Monolith, don't you understand you have friends who care about you and want you to live and release Condemned 2 on Steam for fuck's sake. Wait Yahtzee, I thought you said this game was quite good. Thanks for paying attention, voice in my head. No worries Yahtzee, don't forget to kill the whores. Alright, stop fussing. Hey kids, let's see if we can think of three words that start with E. Here's one, excruciating. That'll do for a start. Here's another one. Uh, actually, I seem to be kind of fixated on the word excruciating for the moment. Oh wait, I've got one now. End. As in, end this execrable endurance event entailing eager editors endlessly entreating eminent entertainment egotists for efficacious endowments of effluence. And for a third and final E word, eggnog. There we go, three E's for E3. Delighting as it is that the drought is dying down, doing destiny drained your debonair delegate, dominant developers delay for a dog's age, then deliver a desperately drab discharge, and dare to describe it as the due destination for depictions of destruction. Damn it, I don't desire to designate devotion to drudges as dull as ditchwater, so I'm declaring a downloadables day. A bit of Assassin's Creed and a bit of Arkham Asylum, asking to be assigned to the always ambiguous Action Adventure Archive. Uh, apologies, I'm aiming to annul this alliteration annoyance. So it's your standard suite of stealth stabs. Alright, pack it in! Not only does this keep you invested in not being killed, Blimey, that was a weird sentence. This manages to out Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. Although that's not hard, because in comparison most Assassin's Creeds are about as balanced as the arm strength of a professional masturbator. Thanks for trying to get us involved in a forced school sports day kind of way, but if you could imagine the penis of a mosquito brushing gently past a section of the labial folds of a blue whale's colossal vagina, that is how much of a fuck I give about my faction. But I have a special place in my heart for the solo development racket, play hatful. Sorry, I'm not sure that was subliminal enough. Play hatful, you prick! Well, time to write some snarky things about a comedy game's plot, because I'm I'm the kind of guy who'll try to light a swimming pool on fire. What kind of game is this? A racer? A brawler? A platformer? A gather things for twatzer? Action adventure? You need either action or adventure for that. No, I know what it is, it's an endurance test. You see how much of the dialogue you can listen to before you slice your own ears off with a paper guillotine, or perhaps just turn the volume down you spaz. Sonic Boom can suck my fat cock. I think of a more roundabout way of saying that, but I refuse to put more effort in than the developers did. What makes you think I'm this stupid, Sonic Boom? You bought me! Touché! Reports are in that Halley's Comet has been sighted and appears to be making a trail in the shape of the winning lottery numbers, but in even less likely news, Nintendo has come up with an entirely new first party IP! But not only is Splatoon an original IP, it's also a third person shooter with online multiplayer focus no less. Don't tell me someone at Nintendo actually opened a curtain for a second and caught a brief glimpse of the direction video games have largely been taking for the last 20 fucking years. Somebody stop them before they actually look out of the window and go into shock induced catatonia! Still I th ink there'll be an ink re in the number of Wii U sales with this ink readable new title. God knows why it keeps making ink puns though when everyone's very clearly throwing paint around, but that's hardly a complaint. Compaint. So while the three massively overleveled Japanese dudes on my team ran ahead to meet the enemy team head on, I'd stay behind with my big paint roller, cause that's totally something you do with ink, isn't it? Put it in a paint roller and ink your living room with a lovely cornflower blue ink, get your fucking story straight! My non-gaming friends often say to me, hey we'd really like to play the best video games, which of the next gen consoles do you think we should buy? To which I reply, why did you just make two completely unrelated statements? That was like saying, I want to join the Russian ballet, what colour should I paint my ass? Or I'd like to visit Morocco, how many times should I stick my head in a Corby trouser press? It plays like somebody said, 
said, hey, make a horror game. And somebody else said, okay, what about? I just told you about horror. No, I mean, what happens in it? What's the context? What are the major themes you want to work with? Horror, horror, and horror. Jesus Christ, just do it. Why are you so difficult to work with? So how about the horrors happening because reality is being overwritten by a deranged, disfigured scientist's twisted subconscious? And also he's half ostrich and rides a unicorn from space and you're not listening anymore, are you? Yep, sounds good. Just do it. Call me if you need money. I'm off to the cocaine tasting. Earthbound, the 1994 SNES RPG that attained cult appeal but initially sold in America about as well as oily rags sell to people who are on fire. It's also very nearly a timely subject with all this talk about whether or not Smash Brothers is going to introduce Max Payne or Margaret Thatcher or whoever. So if you've ever wondered about the origin of that one Smash Brothers character with the baseball cap and the thousand yard stare like Wario's been molesting him in the green room, then step this way. So an important and artistic cult hit was marginalised and ignored because it didn't fit within the latest standards for graphics in an industry obsessed with competitive technology. Christ! Isn't it great that that kind of bollocks doesn't happen anymore? Oh for fuck's sake, why didn't they just call it Battle Mage? That's a really fucking good title. Punchy, memorable, gets the point across. I'd call my dog Battle Mage. Fuck it, I'd call my kid Battle Mage. The playground beating would be very character building, and the supernatural elements throw a few curveballs but at least remain internally consistent, unlike the fact that a man who wears a fedora and vest somehow managed to convince someone to marry him without choking on their own vomit during the vows. Well I never said I wasn't a hypocrite. Gosh Yahtzee, isn't the summer games drought a pain? Shut your hypothetical face, viewer, what the fuck do you know about pain? For starters, it's the winter games drought in Australia, it's bad enough we have to huddle in our homes trapped by the cruel blast of one degree below ideal surfing weather without AAA releases drying up and forcing us to pass the time with games like Guess How Many Kicks to the Bollocks It Takes to Draw Blood or Frozen Grandparent Tetris, or for those who are truly lost, Boggle. Admittedly the game is so rabidly family friendly that it prefers the term special someone to anything as racy as girlfriend or fuck buddy but it's rather coy for a game in which it's still entirely possible to create a me with what looks like a flaccid cock for a face. It's on 3DS and is vaguely trying to muscle in on Animal Crossing's racket, except unlike Animal Crossing, you decide who comes and lives in your little bubble, and very little else. Mees are added to the population as fast as you can come up with them, so I added myself and all my friends, but I figured a real community requires more than three people, ha ha, I'm lonely. So I populated the rest of the apartment with characters from my novels and indie games, as well as all the Mees that were already on my 3DS, which should explain the presence of Senor Cock on Face and Lady Hitler. I gotta tell you though, Senor Cock on Face ended up being the fucking man. He had by far and away the most friends and everyone was asking to be introduced to him. Interestingly, of all the hotties that were fighting to catch his Jap's eye, he ended up marrying X, the secret agent from my second novel, Jam. I guess only she could be trusted to keep the terrible secret of what he has instead of a cock. So if you don't mind, I think I'm just going to slide to the floor and hope to get smothered to death by the Roomba.